Why, hello there. How are you today? I hope you're enjoying our lovely kingdom. I bet you're here to learn more about the great Odysseus. Well, I will tell you, but first I shall introduce myself. My name is Euryclea and I am a servant in Odysseus' palace. I was originally bought by Odysseus' father, Laertes. Ah, uh, Laertes, he always treated me so kindly. What a wonderful man. But we could never have an official relationship for he didn't want to dishonor his wife. Um, oh, sorry, I got off topic. Where was I? Um, my original job was to raise Odysseus and any other children in the palace. <laughs> um, it was a wonderful job, really, just getting to take care of kids all day. I much enjoyed that job. Odysseus was a wonderful child to raise. From a young age, I could tell he was a strong, courageous, hardworking adventurer. I always knew he was destined for greatness. You know, he was the one that gave the king of Sparta the idea to have the suitors take an oath to always protect his daughter Helen and her chosen suitor. I guess you could say because of this, he was the one that created his own destiny to um, go through 20 years of war and hardships. Um, line. Anyways, as my repayment for his idea. Anyways, as, his, as repayment for his idea, the king allowed um, or convinced his niece Penelope to take his hand in marriage. After Penelope and Odysseus returned to the kingdom, um, they got married and they had a child, Telemachus. It was then my job to raise Telemachus. Odysseus loved his child though, so he tried to spend as much time with him as possible. Uh, I guess this lifted the load off of me a little bit. Uh, just a few short months later though, his idea came back to bite him. See, Helen had run off with some Trojan prince, and Malaeus wanted her back. Uh, Odysseus tried to get out of this task by acting mad, but it didn't really work because the summoners were smarter than him. So he joined the rest of the crew going to fight in a war to win back Penelope, or not Penelope, Helen. Um, after that, it was then raising Telemachus became more of a full-time responsibility. I also was asked to help out Penelope as she was dearly missing her husband. Uh, line. I felt tremendously. I felt tremendously bad for her as her newly wedded husband had just left and little did she know she would not see him for another 20 years. Raising Telemachus was different than raising Odysseus. He had less of a spark and passion than Odysseus did. I guess that had somewhat to do with the fact that he didn't really have a real father figure. I mean, sure, his granddaddy and Aramachus tried to fill that hole, but no one could truly do that. I mean, he did enjoy being raised by Aramachus and did consider him to be like a daddy, but it wasn't the same. He never really learned the skills of being a leader and how to stand up for himself. That's why those suitors stuck, along for, stuck around for so long. Oh, those suitors, boy, were they trouble. Not only did they want to harass Penelope all they want, but they decided to stick around the palace for years and demand our service. Every day, they wanted the best service, the best meals, the ability to kill whatever livestock they wanted, and free reign to harass Penelope all they wanted. Uh, line. Just because? Oh, just because we're supposed to be hospitable does not mean you have to, you get to demand whatever you want. They also decided to play games with and sleep with the younger maidens of the house. And these maidens actually enjoyed it. What a disgrace. Um, line. They thought it was so fun. They thought it was so fun and silly to go off and sleep with them. But, but it wasn't. <laughs> uh, these maidens grew more loyal to these suitors than Penelope, and that just caused more problems. This disloyalty is what ended up pushing the date for, further for Penelope to choose a suitor. See, Penelope had this deal where she would weave a cloth for, um, she had to weave a cloth before she would choose a suitor. She, every day she would weave the cloth and every night she would unweave it. I, in my mind, it was a perfect plan, pushing the date back even further. And it worked for three years, but then some disgraceful maidens had to go and rat her out. Uh, and she was forced? And she was forced to finish the cloth. 
These maidens, being more loyal to the suitors than Penelope, will keep secrets from her and spread her secrets to others. I guess I have to be slightly lenient with them because I did keep a secret from her two ones. See, I, but I did feel tremendously bad about it, but it was very difficult for me to decide as I was choosing between two of my masters. I guess I saw that keeping Telemachus a secret was more important because it uh, pardoned Penelope from any more heartache. And if I really think about it, I did keep another secret from her. I knew Odysseus had returned, but I couldn't tell her for it was his will. See, Odysseus wanted to say Loki and was trying to say Loki and hidden, but it didn't really work because he did get called out by the suitors and he got in a fight. It was a silly fight over something totally pointless that everyone else found entertaining. It was just like something you would see in the hallways of a high school. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Odysseus didn't mean for me to recognize him, but um, I've known him my whole, his whole life, so I mean, he couldn't really hide from me. See, when he was little, he had gotten an accident with a boar, and a boar's tusk hit him just below the knee. He's had a scar there ever since. When I went to go wash his feet, I noticed this unique scar and immediately knew it was him. Uh... But he told me I had to be quiet or he wouldn't be able to successfully take back the kingdom. So I kept, so I didn't tell Penelope. And it paid off. Odysseus was able to reclaim the kingdom with the help of his son, Aramachus and Uh But boy, was it messy. With the horrors I saw on those walls, he was sure lucky to have the gods on his side helping him win the fight. When it was all done, he had the young, disgraceful maidens go and carry out the bodies and clean the room. Then they killed them, too. They deserved it from being disloyal to Penelope. The best part of the evening was seeing the reunion between Penelope and Odysseus. I, they were tremendously happy, and the, their joy was overflowing. I, too, was happy to see that he had returned and to see that Penelope's pain was over. They were finally able to, they had so much to do to catch up and they were finally able to do it. They spent all night catching up and they were finally able to sleep in the bed that Odysseus made. Uh, line. And the kingdom? And the kingdom was back in order. Not everybody was happy, happy about this though. The townspeople were not too happy about the killings that took place. But Odysseus was able to settle their concerns with the help of the gods. And our kingdom has been happy ever since. Well, I have to go attend to Odysseus and Penelope. If you have any more questions, come back and I will tell you. For now, I shall say goodbye, friends.